Kia ora everyone, welcome to Curate Online. It's so great to have you with us today. Yeah, so good to be here with you in your home, wherever you're watching from today. So awesome. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a great day planned for you today. Katie is going to be bringing the word yeah. and uh, there's going to be some amazing worship from that super awesome Curate worship team. Man, I love those guys, faithful bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, hey, another thing that we wanted to celebrate is Auckland moving to 3.2 on Tuesday. New levels of freedom, which is so exciting. 3.2, <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> it means something, it means freedom. Yeah. It means 25 people in your backyard. So hey, make, it, make a point this week, next week on Sunday, gather with 25 people in your outdoors, do a barbecue, uh, get your picnic rugs out, yeah, like take the freedoms that are on offer and make that effort to gather where you can. Mm. So it's awesome. Hey, we also had the opportunity this week to gather with the Kingdom Builders. Uh, it was so amazing yeah. being in the Mount. What did you like about it? I loved being able to gather again with people. Um, we did keep to restrictions, so that's good. We had two separate spaces. I loved being able to worship the Lord again mm. together. I loved hearing the vision about what God has got for Curate going forward. I mm. loved hearing the stories of transformation of what people, oh God is doing in people's hearts yeah. and in their businesses as well. And it was so nice to be able to just take time to pray together with what's going on in our lives. Yeah, so good. Shout out to Harawera yeah. and Cam and John and Lorraine as well. Yeah. Thanks for bringing your hearts to the table. It was awesome. And hearing what Joel brought, man, for that was just, it was amazing, inspiring. So mm. we are on a great path yeah. together. So it's awesome. Hey, we got, we got Curate at Home happening today. Uh, give us a shout out in the chat if you are gathering with other people. We're, we're probably right now gathering with our Curate at Home people. Shout out, super weird being on the TV <laughs> and in the room with you, but happens every week in worship anyway. So, hey, we love gathering together. Times of prayer, time of community. Yeah. We tried to do communion last week. Some people did it, some people didn't, but we're making the effort. Yeah. Hey, in this season, don't forsake the gathering of the saints. Mm. Church is not a building, church is a people. Yeah, that's right. You are the church. Mm. Don't forsake gathering together if you can. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to find a group near you, you can just hop on our website, curatechurch.com slash connect. And um, our team would love to help you find a group near you. And you can also go to that same link if you would like prayer for anything. Our team would love to pray with you with whatever is going on in your lives at the moment. Yeah, sorry. Hey, I just wanted to share a scripture before we pray. Come on. So um, this is from Isaiah uh, chapter 8 from verse 11. It says, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy, like they do, and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord holy in your lives. He is the one you should fear. Mm. He will keep you safe. Don't live in dread of what frightens people. Make the Lord holy in your life. Yeah. He will keep you safe. I love how um, this was a word from the prophet Isaiah like two and a half thousand years ago for the people yeah. of Israel. Um, they were fighting, a, uh, facing a lot of fear and oppression. And I love how even though it was such a long time ago, it still applies to us today, some two and a half thousand years later yeah. with everything that we're facing. Mm. I pray that that scripture is an encouragement to you, that you would remember to keep God elevated and central in your life and remember that he will keep you safe in this time. Yeah, come on. I'm just gonna pray for the gathering now. So good. Yeah. Yeah, God, thank you so much that you are with us. Mm. Thank you that you are our safety. You are our provider, our comforter, our peace. Mm. God, would you be with us as we gather this morning, as we lean in to worship you, mm. to hear um, the message that you have placed on Katie's heart this morning. May you knit us closer together today. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, wherever you are right now would you stand to your feet let's honor the presence of the lord let's lean in let's worship and let's encounter the lord right where we are I would 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every
Hey, welcome today. It's just so amazing to worship together. Um, last week at our Curate at Home, we had a few worship leaders, so that was just so super helpful to have some nice singers in the room. But um, here's a tip, if not, uh, just turn the music up really, really loud um, and just let it be a blessing to the Lord. It doesn't have to be a blessing to others, but let it be a blessing to the Lord. Um, hey, welcome. I wanna thank all of our hosts um, that have people in their home. Thank you, thank you for being the church in this time. We just want to honour you. Um, we know it takes a lot of preparation, getting ready, and um, a bit of skill um, to host, and a bit of generosity. And so I just want to thank you for that. Um, Auckland, you get to move to 20 people or so outdoors, and so I'm just praying for amazing um, weather for you, um, that we can um, begin to gather our Curate Auckland family together outdoors. Um, that's going to be so, so fun. And I just want to let you all know that um, Joel and I and, our, and the leadership, um, we're continuing to discern God's will um, on how we're going to move forward in this season. I know so many of you have been just sending us messages saying that we're praying for you. And I've never had so many people say that they're praying for us. And I just wanted to say thank you because we're feeling it. Um, this is really big. Um, but we're following Jesus, so all is going to be well. You know, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Um, we have been doing a series called Practicing the Way of Jesus, and it has been so incredible. You know, Steve Furish, he shared about practicing the way of Jesus through community. And I know many of you are gathered together to watch um, Curate at Home right now. And that is awesome, practicing the way of community. Um, maybe you'll be practicing it throughout the week. And it's an amazing thing to do. And then Renee spoke on practicing the way of forgiveness and how we have to forgive as many times as needed. It actually needs to become a practice in our life. And then Tony, he shared... Um, how to practice the way of Jesus through Sabbath. And I know many of you were really challenged and we had some great discussions about it at our house and people have been implementing it for the first time and just really experiencing the blessing of it. I love practicing Sabbath. And um, last week, Hayden spoke on practicing the way of silence and solitude. And I just want to give a shout out to everybody who this week practiced that. You took a moment, five, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, a morning, a day. I just want to encourage you, keep going, keep, keep fighting for that time because it is hard fought for. Um, and today I get to continue the series, which is really awesome. But I first wanted to share a bit of a thought with you just to get us ready for the word today. Uh, while we were on sabbatical uh, last year, when we began our sabbatical, it was just Joel and I were in our caravan um, going up north for a couple of weeks. And um, I had my I had my Bible and Joel had his new Bible and my Bible was really like falling apart, you know, it wasn't proper leather, everything was falling away. Um, but I loved that Bible and I saw his and I was like, maybe for Christmas I should get a brand new Bible. And so because I had time we're away, I, I like created the perfect Bible like this. It's like navy goatskin leather with like, it's like gold on the outside and the print is lovely and the um, ESV translation. And so I got my Bible for Christmas. And as we continued to travel around um, in the caravan on our sabbatical, I wanted to keep it perfect. My other one was so like well loved, you know, like that manky toy that your children just love. It becomes the ugliest one because it's like it's dirty, it's smelly, it's well loved. Um, I don't think my Bible was dirty and smelly, um, but it was definitely falling apart and scribbled all over. Anyway, I had my new one and so when we'd travel from place to place, I'd put it back in its box and just make sure it was so well looked after. And then at home even, I've just, I've loved having this perfect Bible. I even got, uh, my friend gave me these special highlighters that, that doesn't rub through to the next page. And I love using those and I'm trying to keep my lines really neat. Anyway, uh, not too long ago, um, I was standing in my kitchen and you know, I'm quite an even tempered person. Uh, it takes a lot to get me upset. Um, and this day, for no particular reason, my emotions, my body, my mind decided now is the time over nothing to get upset. And I was standing there with this full hot cup of tea in my hand 
and I felt my emotions losing control and all I could say was, Katie, don't throw it. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. You want to drink it. You'll have to clean it up. <laughs> and I just went like this and just my cup of tea, just I threw it. Um, kind of embarrassing, I know. I'm 35 and I'm throwing a cup of tea over nothing. Why am I telling you this? Because as I threw it, it went all over our kitchen table and all over my perfect Bible. Why am I telling you this? Well, I didn't realize that I approached the word with just like a little bit of pride. And when I say I didn't realize it, it's because pride is totally blind. So when I approached my, my really well-loved Bible that was falling apart, I had, there was this part of me that was like, look at how much I read the Word. Look at all the scribbles. Look at that. I'm doing really great. And when I approached my new, brand new, you know, tidy, clean Bible, it was like, wow, look at my perfect Bible. Like, I'm doing so well reading this. And now, every time I go to open my Bible, there's tea stains. And from a really low moment, and so I tell you what it's done is it, it immediately humbles me before I open the word. And it's just incredible what humbling can do as we humble ourselves before God. It's like, I'm getting so much more out of this. And in Psalm 25 verse nine, it says that he guides the humble in what is right and he teaches them his way. And why is it just the humble that get to receive this blessing of being guided by the Lord? Well, I think it's because the humble know that if they follow their own wisdom, if they follow their own heart, at best we will get to somewhere okay. But if we follow the wisdom, if we follow the word, if we follow the spirit of God, we can get somewhere to the, that is the way of life better than any, um, any place we could get to on our own. And so I thought that we could take a moment before we get into the Word to just humble ourselves before the Word, to humble ourselves before God and to remind ourselves of just how much we need Jesus. He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. This whole series is called Practicing the Way of Jesus and that's because His way is the way of life. And you know, our job, our purpose, our calling is to become like Christ and that is a really good thing and a much needed thing for all of us. Um, so why don't we humble ourselves before God and His Word this morning or today, whenever you're watching this. It says in Isaiah 40, um, chapter 8, that the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Father, I thank you that your word has been here before us and that your word will still be here after us. Lord, we come before you and we come before your word today with humility and we acknowledge that your word is the word of life. May we have the posture of your disciples, Lord, who would sit at your feet and call you Rabbi. May we no longer follow the haphazard desires of our heart, but would we follow the sure and trusted way of you and of your word. We thank you, Jesus, that you are who our soul longs for. It's you who we seek. Guide us, we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, um, today I will be speaking on practicing the way of Jesus through prayer, through prayer. And I'm really excited to share that with you. Um, in the book of Luke in chapter 11, verse one, it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. I love that, in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. You know, these disciples, they had been around Jesus long enough to see his prayer life. They watched him go off on his own. They heard his prayers when they were together. Some of the lucky ones even were at the receiving end of that prayer. They saw enough of Jesus' prayer life to see how powerful his was and to see what theirs lacked. And so they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And, and I really pray that that would be the posture of our heart today. Lord, teach us how to pray. So we're going to be looking at four different um, kinds of prayer that were either modeled by Jesus or taught by Jesus. And the first kind of prayer that we're going to be looking at is the prayer of blessing. The prayer of blessing. 
My daughter Violet, who just turned nine um, last Friday, she found this little Bible. It's like um, the Psalms and the Gospels, and she was so excited to have it. And she was sitting on her bed and she was showing me, and I was like, that's awesome, let's read something out of it. And she went, okay, and she opened it up and she started reading, and this is what she started reading. Matthew 19, 13. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. And Jesus said, let these little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he had placed his hands on, him, on them, he went from there. I mean, firstly, I just have to point out that I love that when, Je that, that when Violet went to open um, the Bible, Jesus, his invitation to her was, come to me, come to me, come to my word, it's for you. But what was happening is there were all of these parents and they were bringing their children to Jesus and the disciples were like, no, he's too important, like he's too busy. And Jesus was like, no, no, I am not. Um, let them come to me. And what he did is he blessed them. He loved them so much and the gift that he gave them was to bless them. And so he laid his hands on them and he didn't stop until he had prayed for every single one of them, a prayer of blessing. Uh, Jesus prayed prayers of blessing. He prayed prayers of blessing. Um, when I was in Auckland, um, in our curate Auckland one day when I could get there and my gosh, I miss it. Um, I called an Uber one time and I was Ubering to 44 George Street where we gather, where I cannot wait to gather with you again. Um, it flooded completely. Did you know that, the building? Um, I'm calling it uh, um, the Curate Auckland's baptism. So it's been flooded um, but and purified, you know. Um, but anyway, so I was, I was getting um, an Uber over to Curate Auckland and this lovely man picked me up and he asked me where I was going. I said I was going to church and he told me that he believed in Jesus and we started having this great conversation. And he started sharing with me uh, the power of blessing. And he shared with me that when he was younger and he was from um, a small little town in Africa, he shared with me that when he was a, a boy, um, he saw this elderly couple when they were struggling to carry um, everything that they were carrying. So he left his football game and he went over and he helped them carry their um, gear into their home. And he said that they, um, to thank him, they prayed a blessing over him. And he said as a little boy, he just thought, I bet that, that blessing will actually do something. He just believed in the power of it. And so he thought to himself, actually, why don't I, whenever I see the opportunity, if old people bless, um, why don't I just, whenever I see an opportunity, help them so that they'll bless me and my life will be blessed. And he shared to me how whenever he would see an opportunity, he would help them cross the road, help carry their things. He would do whatever he needed to do and they would always bless him. And then he said to me, you should see my life. He said, I am so blessed. He said, if you met my wife, if you met my daughters, oh, if you saw the way God's come through, you would know I am so, so blessed. And then he said, guess how old I am? And I thought, oh, people only say that if like, they look really young for their age. People who look older for their age, they don't say, guess how old I am. Um, so I knew he must, have, he must be older than he looks. And so I thought, at best, he must be, you know, 50. Um, and man, he blew me away. He was in his 70s. This guy looked amazing. And he was like, I am so healthy. I've never been to a doctor. I am blessed. And he said, if only Christians and people who carried the Spirit of God, if only they knew the power that they had in their words, the power that they had to bless in the name of Jesus. He said that they would be blessing their family, blessing their children, blessing new people, blessing people they met. They would be blessing strangers. They would be blessing all of the time if they truly knew the power of it. If they truly knew the power of it. You know, on average, we speak about 7,000 words a day. And gosh, we might as well put some of them to good use. So many of our words just fall to the ground. But when we pray a blessing, those words don't fall to the ground, but they go up to heaven to our holy God who hears them. And, and then what happens from there? Supernatural things begin to happen. Supernatural blessings begin to take shape. And also, it's so good for our soul to be blessing. We were created to bless, I believe. Um, our son Micah, he's been really sick all year. He's um, got asthma, but this year has just been a particularly 
tough year for him with his asthma, just constant, constant, a bit relentless. And so on his wall, I um, wrote out this scripture, which is a blessing over his health. And it's from John, um, 3 John 1 to 2, and it says, Beloved, I pray that all will go well with you and that you may be in good health, even as it goes well with your soul. And every time I tuck my career in and I say goodnight, I just pray that prayer as I'm leaving his room and I just pray that blessing over him. And it's actually been amazing just over the last month starting to see how his health is beginning to really improve. Um, and I just want to encourage you, Jesus blessed. He prayed blessings. And what I could have done is gone to the Word and found lots of blessings for you. Um, but I thought, actually, this is an amazing opportunity for you to go to the Word yourself. Um, go to Google, if you like. Google prayers of blessing, um, scriptures of blessing. And why don't you write that out or, or memorize them and just start speaking blessing over your loved ones, over your life, over your health. Jesus prayed pr prayers of blessing. Man, that's a tongue twister, turns out. Um, okay, passionate prayer. I want to talk about passionate prayer. Hebrews 5 verse 7 says, In the days of his flesh, so when Jesus walked this earth, he offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence loud cries, tears. He prayed with such conviction of his requests. He prayed with such compassion for the weak. He prayed with such desperation to see the kingdom of God come to earth that his prayers were full of passion. And I wonder, what do your prayers sound like? I had to reflect, what do my prayers sound like? Are you moved to tears? Not tears just for yourself, but, but tears for a hurting world that needs a saviour. Here's what I'm not saying. That if all of your prayers aren't passionate, then you should feel bad. <laughs> I'm not saying that. You know, so often in my nighttime prayers, I fall asleep during them. <laughs> Sometimes in my daytime prayers, um, I find myself getting distracted and I have to bring myself back. But I tell you what, if, if all of my prayers were like that, if even half of my prayers were like that, I would be really concerned. I would be concerned about the state of my spirit and I would be concerned about my disconnect from the mission of God. So wherever, wherever Jesus went, whatever town he went to, even if there was a rumor of his coming, there was like a spiritual awakening that would happen. There was a hustle, there was a bustle. Um, people who were working, they would put down the tools of their trade. Mothers and fathers would grab their children. The crowd would come, men, women, children. They would bring the sick, they would bring the, the demon oppressed, they would bring, they would bring the, the helpless, they would bring the lost and it must have been such a commotion it must have been such a commotion this spiritual awakening I imagine the emotions they must have felt as it says so often people push their way through the crowd to get to Jesus or they tried to get close enough just to hear his voice there was a commotion when he came near and I believe that most of us here today need a spiritual awakening most of us need an awakening. If there's not a commotion in your soul of emotion, of feelings when we come before Jesus to pray, I believe that we need a spiritual awakening. You know, just like a fire will naturally dim over time, so can the fire in our spirit if we aren't intentional and if we aren't responsible for keeping to fan that flame, the passion of God, the passion for the lost, the passion for the mission of God. And I pray right now, even now where you are, that the Holy Spirit would come upon you now and that there would be a spiritual awakening in your soul. And for those of you who've let the fires burn out when there are just embers 
Embers, I embers, I pray that the Spirit of God would awaken you now in Jesus' name and that it would spark something in your spirit, something that could not be contained, a love for the lost, a passion for the mission of God. I pray that it would be ignited in you right now in the curate at homes. I pray the Holy Spirit would fall on you now and you would be convicted by the Spirit. I will no longer just be apathetic towards the lost, but I'm going to pray with tears and passion towards them. Would He awaken in us an understanding of the severity of the condition of a soul that is separated from the Saviour? You know, part of ensuring that our prayers are passionate is to practice regularly praying for the lost. It's to practice regularly praying for the lost. I love in the book of Luke in chapter 5 verse 30, it's talking about um, the Jesus. He had gone into Levi as this tax collector's house and tax collectors were so frowned upon. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their set complained to the disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and with sinners? And Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And I have not come to call the righteous, but to call the sinners to repentance. And Jesus wasn't talking about the physically sick. He was talking about those who had a lifestyle of sin, who were separated from Him and from God. And I wondered if I was to see all of my prayers, if they were to be laid out before me, I wondered what would I see? I, I can imagine I would see a lot of prayers towards people whose spirits are saved, whose souls are saved, but whose bodies are sick. But I wonder how much of my prayers actually goes to those whose souls are sick, they're separated from their Saviour. And I wonder if that's because we naturally pray for what we see. And if that's the case, I just pray that God would give us spiritual eyes to see what He sees, to see the spiritual condition, that our prayers may be full of pleas for the lost soul. And I should know better than this. You know, a few years ago, um, just when I was driving down my street, I would see this one woman and there was something about her, the way her shoulders were slumped, the way she walked. I just prayed for her and I would just pray simple prayers like this. Jesus, I pray for that woman. Lord, I don't know her, but I know that you do. God, I pray that you would bring people into her life that may point her into your direction. Lord, I don't know how, but somehow, Jesus, would you plant your seed in her, the seed of your word, and I pray that someday she may know you. Just simple prayers like that. And every time I see her, I would just let up another little prayer and honestly not really expecting anything. Two years ago, I was speaking at Curate and I was actually speaking on the power of prayer. And as I was standing there and I was at the point where I was sharing testimony about answered prayers, I looked out and who did I see? This woman that I'd been praying for. And I was trying to hold it together, kind of like I am right now, because I was just so overwhelmed with the grace of God that He would show me the fruit of my prayers. And so I'm like, gosh, if our prayers are that powerful, if it enacts something in the spiritual realm, if, 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 it, if, if it activates something, if things begin to happen, if we truly knew the suffering that it is to be disconnected from our Saviour, I pray you would be reminded what that's like. And if you never really knew what that was like, I pray that God would give you His heart so that you would understand it, so that we wouldn't be able to help. But when we see people, we would be praying for them. God, I don't know how, but see Send someone their way, God. Plant a seed in their heart. Move in their life, God. I pray, Lord, that you would intervene, that there would be divine connections, Lord Jesus, that they may know you. They may know you. I, I, our prayers, they need to be passionate. Jesus' prayers were passionate and he cared for the lost. He spent time with them. And so I believe we need to practice making time for the lost in our prayers and in our life. And the last prayer I want to talk about is uh, the persistent prayer. The persistent prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. This is the parable of the persistent widow. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story. I'm so thankful for the story. He, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. 
there was a certain judge in a certain city, and he, and he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people, this judge. And a widow of that city came to him repeatedly, and she would say, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. And the judge ignored her for a while, but she kept going to him. And finally, he said to himself, I don't fear God and I don't care about people, but, but this woman is driving me crazy. And so I'm gonna see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. And then the Lord said, this is Jesus, learn a lesson from this judge. Learn a lesson from this judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think, don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them and quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many of them on earth will have faith? This widow had a thing called long suffering. Long suffering. Long suffering is having or showing patience and faith in spite of troubles, especially caused by other people. And look, I wish it wasn't so, but the truth is there are and probably always will be for us circumstances that are hard, that are long, and that are outside of our control. They require a lot from us. Endurance of strength, a faith put to the test, a trust in God against all instincts, and it takes a lot of resolve. Those of you who have been praying for something or for someone for a long time, you know exactly what I mean. I know just what it costs to keep one foot in front of the other, to continue to pray, to continue to show up in life when you're facing a challenge that just won't give in. I know it can feel incredibly relentless Maybe for some of you that long suffering has been a journey with depression, anxiety, mental health. It can feel so relentless. It comes at you every day and it can feel like it's a battle that doesn't give in. Maybe it's the effects of sickness and unhealth and it feels like every day it's relentless. It just keeps coming. Maybe it's heartache from watching a son, a lost son or a, lo a lost daughter um, continue to make poor choice after poor choice and the heartache and the strength needed to just keep fighting that battle and the heartache that continues to come to you from watching your precious son and daughter or spouse or loved one continue to be lost and make these choices that hurt them. You know, I, I think that for everybody that is facing something like that, for everybody who's enduring long suffering, just in case nobody's told you lately, I wanna say from me and from Curate, from the team, from our pastoral team, we just wanna say to you that you are so brave. You are so brave, you are so courageous, well done. Every time you get back on your knees to pray again, well done. Every time you show up again, well done. Well done. For when suffering and opposition can feel so relentless, our prayers need to be relentless too. Jesus said to us, He gave us the story to teach us how to keep praying and how to not give up, how to not give up. Hey, I've been there. I know what it's like. I, I am enduring long suffering at the moment. And I remember one day just crumbling on our kitchen floor and just like waving the white flag of surrender and just saying, God, what is the point? What is the point in me continuing to pray when I'm not seeing any change? And I felt like God said to me in that moment, Katie, you don't know what you see. You don't see what I see. And I wanna encourage you, if you feel like you've just been praying and praying and praying, and you feel like you haven't been seeing the fruit and the results, I wanna encourage you that you don't see what God sees. And what is my job in this time? What is your job in this time? It's the same job that we always have, and that is to become like Christ. And it's comforting to know, it's comforting to know that to become like Christ, our job is to just not give up. 
It's to just not give up in prayer. It's to keep being persistent in prayer. It's to keep being faithful in prayer. And so I wanna reignite that in you. If you've given up, if you feel like you've put those prayers to the wayside because you haven't felt that, you haven't seen the result, you haven't seen the fruit, I just wanna encourage you right now, pick those prayers back up again. Get on your knees in the morning, get on your knees at night and keep bringing that request towards God. I know it hurts, I know it's hard, but keep going, you are doing incredible. God will not fail you. It is not in his nature to fail you. And who knows, he might be doing something even better than you could dream in this situation. That is in his nature. There's this quote from E.M. Bounds, who he wrote nine books on prayer. I wanna read this to you, it's powerful. I hope this is an encouragement to you. Prayer Prayer affects three different spheres of existence the divine, the angelic, and the human. It puts God to work, it puts angels to work, and it puts men to work. It lays its hands upon God, angels, and men. What a wonderful reach there is in prayer. What a wonderful reach there is in prayer. And hey, maybe you're watching this and you're like, Katie, I don't even, I don't even know how to pray. <laughs> like I've been fumbling along. I don't even know how to, pray these prayers of blessing, these passionate prayers, um, to keep persisting in prayer. Like, I just don't even know how to pray. And you know, in the beginning when I shared Luke 11, how the disciple, the unknown disciple came to Jesus and he said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Jesus said, okay. And he actually answered and he teaches us and he gave us this incredible and powerful and all encompassing prayer to pray. And and you can pray this prayer, it's the Lord's prayer and you can pray that if you're just beginning or even if you're just in a season and your prayers, you just need a bit of a change. Um, Practicing this prayer every day, even twice a day is a really powerful thing to do. And so it's gonna hopefully come up on your screens. And just where you are, I just encourage you to read it out with me. If you're in our host, if you're host and you're together, um, our curator at homes, would you, let's just read this together. This is powerful. Matthew 6 verse 9, and and I'm reading out of the um, New um, New King James translation. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever, amen, amen. Jesus, he lived a life of prayer. He lived a life of prayer, prayers of passion, prayers of blessing, prayers of suffering. He prayed alone, he prayed with people, he prayed all night, he prayed quick prayers of thanks. He was, his way was a way of prayer. And when he ascended into heaven, he actually became our high priest so that our way might be also a way of prayer, that our life might also be a life of prayer. See, before Jesus, the people of God had to bring their prayers and their requests to a priest who would then offer them to God. But Jesus, he ascended to heaven as our high priest, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We see that in Hebrews. It says that therefore, since we have a great great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. I wanna encourage you to practice the way of prayer. Practice the way of prayer. Jesus, he practiced 
practiced the way of prayer. His life was a life of prayer. I want to encourage you, pray blessings over your family, pray blessing over your work over your workplace, pray blessings over your faith, over your health, over your mind, over your soul. Pray that over your loved ones and pray passionate prayers. Don't let your prayers be dull. Ignite the fire in your heart. Nobody else can do that for you. That's for you to do. Pray these passionate prayers and ask God to rekindle in you a love for the lost and pray for the lost. Even now, I pray that um, after this message that in your homes, would you pray for the lost? Would you pray for those who don't know Jesus yet? And would we pray those persistent prayers in our long suffering? I just want to thank every single one of you for joining today and I'm going to leave you with a time to pray. I'm not going to pray now. I want you all to pray. See, I'm not going to do the work for you. You, you can pray to God. You have a direct line. You can confidently go to the throne of grace today. Would you go? Would you go there? It will change your life. Even if you don't see it in this moment, he's doing so much more than we can see. Bless you. Hey, wow, wasn't that an amazing message? Hey, thank you so yeah. much, Katie. We really appreciate all the heart and passion and preparation you put into things. Hey, we're not gonna keep you for too long right now. Why don't we do exactly what Katie just said? Let's stand to our feet wherever we are, and we're gonna take some time to pray. Pray with those around us. Yeah, great. Hey, and if you're watching this by yourself, we would love to pray with you. We've got a pastoral team who would love to pray. So you can just reach out in the chat, just click that button and they'll be in contact real soon. Yeah, great. Hey, God bless you all. Have an amazing week. May the Lord be with you and may He keep you and keep you safe. God bless you. Have an amazing week.